Alright, what's up guys? So, my name is Brandon, I'm a used car dealer, and today I'm at a used car dealer auction. So, what I'll do before I go into these auctions to bid on cars is I'll come out here on the auction lot, look at all these cars, and get myself a list together. I'll check them out with my scan tool. Um, and today, after I check the cars, my list is poopy. And yes, that is a uh, technical term. Uh, but what I want to talk about today is the quality and the volume of cars that have been at the, these auctions. And I've noticed over the last few months, the amount has gone down and down and down and down. And there's a lot of reasons for that. So one of the reasons would be that people just aren't really wanting to trade in their cars. Right now with the, uh, the interest rates where they are and the amounts that you have to pay for a monthly payment on a newer car, a lot of people who have good cars that run well, they're not trading them in. They want to keep them for themselves. On top of that, the auction values from where they were six months ago are still way down. So these uh, franchise stores, these new car stores, are still not wanting to pay hardly anything for trade-ins. So another reason, one that's uh, very frustrating for us smaller used car dealers is that now when these franchise dealers, these new car stores are getting good trade-ins, they're actually keeping them for themselves. Before the pandemic, there was enough new car inventory to go around that there was no reason for them to keep any of these trade-ins. They would send them straight to auction and then let us little guys basically fight over them to get them. But now that's not even in the equation because anything that's good, these franchise stores, they're just gonna keep for themselves to sell on their own lots. And the last reason and definitely the biggest reason is that these new car stores aren't selling as many cars as they used to. So this one's an obvious, we know that uh, new car stores, they don't have as much inventory as you used to, the interest rates are way higher, so they're not able to push as many cars out. But what a lot of people don't know is how used car dealers get their cars is by coming to these auctions, buying these cars, but where they come from is from these new car stores, from their trade-ins. So when you go and buy a new car and you trade in your old car, a lot of times that new car store doesn't want to keep it on their lot. So they'll send it to the auction for the small guys to fight on, to fight over. And since they're not selling as many cars, they're not getting as many trade-ins. If they're not getting as many trade-ins, they're not sending as many to the auctions. And that's what we're seeing across all these auctions, the, uh, the quantity and the quality of all of these auction vehicles and the wholesale inventory just across the whole used car market is going down and down and down and down. And that is what is keeping used car prices elevated. People don't wanna buy no, new cars now. They're too expensive, they can't afford the payments. So they're being pushed to used cars. And because they're not buying new cars, there's no new used cars going back into the system. So the actual uh, quantity of the used vehicles that are in higher demand right now is going down and down and down and down. So overall, I think the overall trend of used car prices is still going down because interest rates are high, demand is down. Um, but until we get this supply demand figured out from the new car dealers, uh, from the new side till they start lowering prices and being able to push out more cars until we get some interest rate um, incentives on uh, the, this new car dealer side until we get actual interest rates to come down, you're really not going to be able to see a big um, trend, any kind of big move down in the used car market. But like I said, overall, the, the trend is still down. Um, we're gonna have this blip of tax times. Prices are spiking. Um, prices are going up right now. You can see it in the data. We're seeing it at auction right now. Um, but that will pass. And then again, the trend is going to be down after that. But you're still going to, um, just gonna to have to have these new car dealers start selling some cars to get us some used car inventory to be able to get the used car prices to to get back down to where they were pre-pandemic. And we're nowhere close to that. And it's going to take a very, very long time. We've been in a used car bubble. I've been saying this all along my channel, but bubbles take a very, very long time to deflate. We know that from the housing crash back in 2008, prices don't just correct overnight and they're not going to do that with, with used cars either. So um, as the, the demand for you, for new cars, keeps going down the demand for used cars is going to go up because they're more affordable than new cars are um, so that's what we have to work with that's what we're fighting against in the used car market right now and uh, 
what we're going to do today is we're going to give you some uh, used car prices show you what dealers are are paying for them i'm going to go around to a lot of these cars back behind me check out a few different ones some trucks uh, some suvs some cars get you guys some prices on them and we'll have the prices at the end of the video today uh, but if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel please like the video and uh, leave us a question down in the comments below and uh, you know what let's just go check out some cars all right, I think this is a good one for us to check out. This is a Land Rover Discovery. It's a, uh, actually, I'll look at the, it's a 2019, it's got 40,000 miles. Uh, pretty clean, a little trash in there, but that's just the buyer's guide they had in there. Uh, seats look good. All right, so 2019 Land Rover, 40,000 miles. All right. And this one's a 2017 Ford Fusion. It's got 129,000 miles. But I, I want to show you this one because it's a newer car. It's got okay miles, not great. Um, but it's, uh, it's in pretty rough shape. And I want you to see what the difference is, if there's going to be any. I know the prices are higher right now. But this thing is nasty. Um, this comes from a new car store. So it's probably not a repo. They don't do a lot of, of repoing at these new car stores. So someone most likely traded in this car just like this gross so um, but i want to check it just so you can see the difference between something that looks really really nice and really really kept up and then something like this because it's probably going to be a lot closer in price than you actually think but 2017 ford fusion 129,000 miles so i wanted to thank uh top don for sponsoring this video they actually sent me this scanner for us to try out so we're going to try it out right now this scanner has bi-directional control and also ECU coding. Pull up the ECM and can read the fault codes and it easily tells me exactly what's going on with this car and uh, where I need to go to actually um, figure out what the issue is. But what I really like about uh, this scanner is it doesn't just read the ECM. It reads the transmission, it reads fuel pump module, reads body control module, even the, the digital radio receiver, heated seats, uh, HVAC, lift gate. So it, it reads all of these different systems to be able to show you what's going on in your vehicle. So if you're looking for a scanner, you can actually use the coupon code in the description below and uh, be able to pick this one up for yourself. All right, lots of questions about Subaru on the channel. This is a 2013 Outback. It's got 164,000 miles. Check the inside of it. Uh, it's pretty dirty. Nothing's ripped up in it or anything, but it's, uh, it's just a little bit rough. Um, but we'll check the price on this. It's a 2013 Outback, 164,000 miles. All right, we saw this one last week. It went through and it no sold. I can't, I can't remember if it went on an if bid or it no sold, but it's a 2015 Cherokee. Um, either way, I mean, if it went on an if bid on a phone call, then uh, it's still no sold because it's here again. Pretty clean. We'll check the price on it again this week. And it's a 2015 Cherokee, 86,000 miles. All right, here's a good one, 2014 Wrangler, four-door. Uh, it's got 64,000 miles. Let's see here. And it's an automatic, dirty McDonald's. You get some lunch with your purchase. Good tires. Uh, 2014 Wrangler, uh, four-door, 64,000 miles. All right, this is a 2013 Silverado, a little extended cab. Uh, not full four doors. Uh, it's uh, 2013. It's got 67,000 miles. Z71 package. Uh, not center console, just a little flip down seat. So, one of the lower end models. It's not crazy clean, not crazy dirty, right in the middle. So, we'll check this one 2013 Silverado, 67,000 miles. All right, here's another Outback. It's a 2016 with uh, 130,000 miles. This one looks better than the last one. Oh yeah, it looks pretty nice. Actually, can I drive this? Nope, getting off topic. All right. So we're gonna check this one out. It's a 2016 Outback with 130,000 miles. All right, so I actually like this. Not functional for what I want to do, but this is a sweet car. It's a 2016 uh i'm actually not sure what uh what model this is let's see this is a five series yep 
It's a 2016, 124,000 miles, and it is very, very clean. Nice car. Yeah, I like this. So, check this out, see how much it goes for. 2016, five series, 124,000 miles. All right, I wanna check this one. This is a uh, 2014 QX60. It's got 123 mile, 123,000 miles. Uh, seats are a little bit warm, but overall it looks very clean. It's a good looking car. I need to actually do some more research on these because I'm looking for something for me to drive to, and this is kind of the size that I would look for. Anyway, go check this out. Uh, QX60, 2014, 123,000 miles. All right, here's another five series. It's a 2015, 95,000 miles. Um, in my opinion, is not as nice as the other one that we just looked at. A little bit, a little bit more rough, but we'll check it out anyway and see what it brings. It's a 2015 five series, 95,000 miles. All right, I want to check this one. It's a uh, 2016 Yukon. I think it's the XL package. Yep. It's got 123,000 miles. And it looks all right. It needs to be cleaned up. But it actually looks good. Uh, the outside looks great. Uh, 2016 Yukon, 123,000 miles. All right, I've had a lot of questions about Murano's. I don't ever look at them because I have heard horror stories about the transmissions on the older ones. Anyway, the versions that I would buy, I don't know anything about these newer ones. So take that with a grain of salt. But it's a 2015, 114,000 miles. Um, look pretty dirty on the inside. Yeah, a little rough. Uh, but we'll check the price on it. See what dealers are paying for these. Back up again. Uh, 2015 Murano, 114,000 miles. All right, we got 12 to check for you guys. I think that's enough. Um, so what we'll do is we'll put the prices at the end of the video like I usually do. And uh, now we'll run in there and I'll get you some auction footage. And uh, let's uh, see what... I was going to try to say something catchy or funny right here. And it's just... I just don't have it. Don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, put in the comments below what I should have said right there to transition from uh, looking at cars to going into auction. There you go. You do it. Back to the house, got you guys some prices. I'm just gonna read them off real quick. Um, we got a 2016 Outback with 130,000 miles. It went for $11,200 and they no sold it. All right, the 2013 Subaru Outback with 164,000 miles. It went for $5,300 and it sold. All right, the 2016 S Series with 124,000 miles. Um, it brought $12,700 and it was put on an if, on a phone call. All right, the 2014 Wrangler was the four door. It only had 64,000 miles. It went for $19,000 and it sold. All right, this 2013 uh, Silverado had 67,000 miles, great miles on it. Um, it only brought $9,200 and they put it on an if, but I talked to the rep um, right after it ran through and uh, they were saying that they wanted $15,000 for it but I talked to some of the guys who were uh, bidding on it and they said it was rusty so that's why I didn't bring hardly any money but they're so far apart that deal won't get done um, but, but probably because the truck was a little bit rusty and the rep for the store actually didn't know that so they did not price their floor accordingly. 
All right, the 2015 Cherokee with 86,000 miles that ran last week, so it ran again, no sold last week. Um, this week it brought $9,600, and they put it on an if on a phone call. I think that's even less than what it brought last week, so it's probably not going to get done. All right, the 2019 Land Rover with 40,000 miles, um, it didn't even get a bid. No, no one in lane even raised their hand. They didn't even want to try to bid on it. Um, they didn't want it on their lot. So uh, they just said after after it went through and nobody bid on it that the seller wanted $25,000. If anyone may want to make them an offer, then they could talk to them after the sale. All right, the 2017 Ford Fusion that was really, really, really dirty and had 129,000 miles, um, it sold for $5,700. All right, the 2014 QX60 had 123,000 miles and it brought $10,500 and it sold. All right, the 2015 5 Series BMW had 95,000 miles on it. It brought $10,300 and it sold. All right, the 2016 Yukon, it had 123,000 miles. Um, it brought $23,400 and it sold. All right, the 2015 uh, Murano, 114,000 miles. This one was actually kind of funny. Um, so in lane, it the the bid brought ten thousand dollars. The seller said, "No, we can't do that. Um, we got to have thirteen grand for it." And so the the bidder just said, "No, we can't do it." And then the seller said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, wait. Okay, I can do I can do eleven five. So the bidder went up to the the rep that was on the podium stage, whatever you want to call it. He he grabbed his hand. I don't know if they said grace, if he slipped him a 20, uh, what what happened there, but they both were laughing, they were talking, and then they sold it to him for $11,000. So that was uh, it was good to see them working together, but still price is too high, but it, it's good to see some of these sellers to actually act, moving on some stuff, dumping some stuff. All right, auction's over, and we got absolutely nothing. Prices are too high, and I'm just, I'm not going to do it. It's... Uh, we, we've got enough cars now, um, and luckily the last uh, two days we actually bought 14 from the last two auctions. When I say we, I mean Alex went to those auctions and he bought them, so uh, I'm not contributing to the team right now, and I apologize. Uh, but we still have cars. I think we still have over like 120, like 125, something like that. Um, still selling cars though, so it's, a, it's an uphill battle getting stocked up, but I think we're only weeks away now from tax time. Um, but if you watched the end of this video, thank you so much for the support. Um, leave a comment question down in the in the comments um, what else do I need to tell you to do will you please subscribe to the channel and uh, like this video and thank you guys again so much for all the support hope you have a great day all right how's it going so my name is Brandon I'm a used car dealer and today I think I am on the wrong setting all right auctions done and we got wanted to say a bad word there but we <laughs> we got nothing um which is okay prices were too high um but luckily the last two days that's a lot of noise going over there hopefully you can still hear me uh 